Today we're going to learn why we need to top balance our lithium iron phosphate cells before we use them to build a battery pack. So let's say you buy some cells, whether they're grade A, B, or C, or they're used lithium iron phosphate cells, or whether they're the same voltage or not, you still need to do an initial balance. And what that means is bringing these all to the same state of charge, but using the voltage to determine if they're at the same state of charge is unreliable for this chemistry. This is because you have a relatively flat charge and discharge curve, and so that means that these could be the same voltage with your meters, but they could be slightly off state of charge wise. And it's very important to have a solid initial balance so that when you do your first capacity test, you have accurate results. If one of your cells is too high or too low and it triggers your BMS high or low voltage disconnect, your capacity results will be off and you'll think that you got ripped off. Also, if you're having balancing problems with a used or new pack and you're slapping active cell balancers on there to compensate for that, you need to do an initial balance and see if if that fixes your problem. A lot of people, when they see one of their cells spiking, they're like, oh, I'll just slap an active balancer on there. That's not how you solve the problem. You should do an initial balance, then capacity test it, and watch the cells under large loads to see if there's a variation with internal cell resistance. And if you do have a bad cell, you should probably swap it out for a new one. Also keep in mind, if I were to connect all of these cells in parallel and let them naturally balance over time, they will balance, but it could take weeks or months depending on what size battery bank you have. The variation in voltage between this is very, very small. When it's at a high state of charge, these will pass current from each other and balance very quickly. A lot of people will check the balance of their cells and say, oh, it's only off by 0.01 volts. These are new cells, they came at the same voltage. I should just be able to connect them to a BMS and I'll be okay. And that's technically true and you can let the BMS manually balance it on its own. But if you have a very large battery bank or you have variation in cell internal resistance and you have large loads or you want the best longevity, you should do a manual top balance no matter what. Now that we have that stuff out of the way, let's actually balance these cells. We have 16 cells that you could make a 48 volt battery bank and we're going to connect them all in parallel. That means that the positive are on this side and the negatives are on this side. Now I just need to connect these together with bus bars. You need to wear safety glasses if you're touching battery terminals. Now let's add these bus bars to all of these batteries. And then I like to add two more bus bars at the very end so I can attach a charger. Now these batteries are connected in parallel and we can charge them up to 3.65 volts. And we're gonna do this with a cheap Amazon power supply and we're gonna set it to 3.65 volts. And then we're gonna crank the amps all the way to the maximum and then we're gonna connect our battery. And then you need to wait, but this could take a long time if these cells are at a low state of charge. I mean, think about how many watts is going into this and the watt hour capacity of a solar battery bank. So the fastest way to do this is before you connect these all in parallel, if they're not at a high state of charge, you want to make individual 4S batteries, charge them up with a traditional 12 volt charger very quickly, and then put them all together in parallel. But for most people watching this, I imagine that you have a new battery pack and they're charged up all the way already. So you can just connect them in parallel and then you want to wait until the current drops to practically zero or 0.1 amps. And then you will know that all of these are at the exact same state of charge. And that's pretty much it. It is literally that simple. I think the only problem people will have with this method is if you're using a tiny power supply and all of these are at a low state of charge. Besides that, you can't really screw this up. Just put them in parallel charge them up to 3.6, and then after they're all equalized, then you can connect them in series for a 48 volt battery bank. But after that, you will be set. You shouldn't need to use active balancers or anything else. Do a capacity test and see where you're at. And if you have full capacity, there's nothing more that you can do. Adding an active balancer to a battery that you're pulling full capacity from is a waste of time. 
and all these other cell balancing methods you shouldn't have to do. You shouldn't even have to use a cell balancer except for every six months to a year if you have a properly balanced and healthy cell system. If one of your cells is bad, then you're gonna have to swap that out. If the resistance is different under large loads, you're gonna have to swap out that cell. But for a solar battery bank, it's very crucial to that have that initial balance. Also, if you're not running a BMS, which I don't recommend, um, a lot of the marine guys still do it, you can set your absorption manual on the chargers, then do a bottom balance. But yeah, I have other videos that cover the reasons if you wanna do that. But anyways, yeah, I just need to let these sit and I'll be good to go. I hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions, leave them below and I'll answer them as fast as I can. And I will talk to you guys soon, bye.